Well, Sloppy Joe strikes again. The FBI reportedly finding six more secret documents in President Biden's Delaware home. Which Delaware home? I bet he's got several. The White House still claiming this is no big deal, man. Woo! No regrets. Yeah, chug, chug, chug. Uh, well. How big of a national security threat might this become? It happened over the weekend. Federal investigators reportedly searching frantically in the House for 13 hours. We do not know what was in the documents. We're told investigators also took some of the president's notes. But we are told some of the documents date back to the president's time as senator. That was almost 15 years ago. I know, it seems like so much longer. He's exhausting. And this stuff's been lying around willy-nilly ever since. Republicans say they have lost all patience. Watch. Investigating Hunter, the Biden family is about like tracking a bleeding bear through a snowstorm. I mean, there's evidence everywhere that would point out that this family has it been involved in the influence peddling scheme for decades? And this is very concerning. And I think that, that the American people are getting a taste of this with the fact that these documents were strode in so many different locations. Bleeding bear through a snowstorm. Still very dangerous. Here's the thing. Even some top Democrats are now admitting this is becoming a disaster watch. It's unbelievable how this could happen. It's totally irresponsible. It's to think that any of them ended up uh, in, in, in boxes uh, in storage one place or the other is just unacceptable. There needs to be this independent investigation and independent prosecutor. Well, today our very own Peter Ducey challenging the White House on how deep their love for secret documents goes. How deep is your love? The House Oversight Committee chairman says this document situation has all the makings of a potential cover-up. Is President Biden involved in a cover-up? We have been very clear here from this administration. The president has been very clear that um, he takes this very seriously when it comes to the when it comes to classified information, when it comes to classified documents, and that his team has been um, has been fully cooperative uh, with this legal matter. Cooperative, not necessarily transparent, which is the opposite of very clear. What is still unknown, who had access, access to the documents and how on earth did they get in those offices and homes and how many more are still out there? Well, let's break it down with tonight's party panel. We've got a good one, including Manhattan Institute senior fellow and author of Supreme Disorder, Ilya Shapiro, is back. We've got Democrat strategist and former Biden campaign surrogate. He's got some splaining to do. <laughs> Go easy on me. <laughs> uh, you know I will. Kevin Walling is back. And the host of Undoctrination. It's a podcast that you must download and listen to immediately and always. Olivia Rondo. Uh, looking gorgeous. Love it. Love to do it. Um, Ilya, I will Thank start. You. Yes, of course. I will start with you because we may not be talking about six documents. We are hearing about six items. So you are a wordsmith. Tell us what that term might mean. Yeah, six documents, six filing cabinets or boxes. It's all the same, right? No. Look, I'm still kind of hung up on that bleeding bear snowstorm. I think it's a bad analogy because in a snowstorm, you can't see anything. So I think he means like some sort of store with white linen or something where there's evidence <laughs> everywhere. But anyway, forget that. <laughs> Uh, the, the problem is, you know, d can't anyone play the game here? Uh, you know, Biden, Trump, Hillary Clinton, Dave Petraeus. Supposedly high-level government officials know that the classified means classified, and you don't put it even uh, with your Corvette, even if that's locked away, even if it's a Lamborghini, even if it's a, a your own personal safe that's the highest possible quality. You don't take that stuff home out of the requisite chain of command and, and all of that. So... Look, uh, Garland, the attorney general, had to appoint a special prosecutor for Biden, as he did for Trump. Mm -hmm. There are some differences before the, between the two cases, uh, of course, but it's really troubling how such sensitive material, uh, you know, regardless of whether Biden is cooperating, Trump is not. That at the end of the day, the problem is we have national security material that's every which way that nobody can track. I mean, that in all seriousness, that's an issue. All right, so they they want to start at zero. Kevin, moving forward, saying, well, the president turned everything over. The president's being very cooperative and helpful. The president is very serious, and I've been very clear, and all of those varies. Um, but I, I, I want to go back. I know that might be inconvenient for the administration. I want to know 
how they got there and who put them there? I think those are very, very important questions. And if you are in possession of classified information and you don't know how much there is of it and you don't know how it got there, that tends to show that you're not very serious about classified information. Kenny, I think it's, an, it's a good point on those two questions. And I think that's why it was so important that Merrick Garland appointed this special counsel, a former Trump Department of Justice official, uh, to ask those questions and to get to the bottom of who exactly uh, was involved. It's not right when Donald Trump does it, and it's not right when Joe Biden has done it, uh, speaking as the Democrat uh, on this panel. Now, do I think Donald Trump or Joe Biden, when they left the presidency or vice presidency, were packaging them up, up their offices and putting those boxes together and things like that? No. Uh, but I, I think it's important to also not just consider what has gone on before in terms of how those documents got to Mar-a-Lago into these two places for uh, President Biden, but uh, to, to Ilya's point, you know, how the both are cooperating. Uh, and you've seen a lot of obstruction coming out of the Trump camp over a year and a half of saying we've given everything and you can't come in and all this kind of stuff. And to some degree, you're seeing a lot of more cooperation uh, from President Biden and his team. I think because, that's an important yeah, distinction. Yeah, Corinne Jean-Pierre can't answer a question to save her life. She is drowning in that press room. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think she is the most qualified person who's ever done the job. I think uh, she's in over her head, and that makes it very difficult to watch. I feel bad for her. I wish they had someone who was more competent who could do a better job of at least acting like they also cared about it uh, without trying to admonish the press every time they ask a straightforward question. Um, so does Joe Biden really care about classified information and being careless with it, Olivia? No, he said he had no regrets at all. No regrets. And, you know, Woo! on the note of the press secretary, this is what happens when you hire for diversity and inclusion instead of merit. So that's just what happens when you do stuff like that. But something that a lot of people don't want to, or a lot of people aren't talking about, and a, a question that Karine Jean-Pierre doesn't want to answer is, the, the Washington Post reported that it leaked to the press, but before that, the White House and the Department of Justice colluded to keep it a secret until the Department of Justice cleared Joe Biden of any wrongdoing. Now, that may be for a couple of different reasons, but the Washington Post characterized it as, well, it was for investigative reasons. I really don't believe that for a second. I, I, there, I think there's still more documents hidden. I mean, they're going to pull one out of his butt or something now. I mean, they're just everywhere. So I'm just, That's I'm a just party waiting. Trick. For, I'm waiting for the 50th one. <laughs> yeah. No, I, well, there's. The, the, the beach house is next, I think. They got it. They got it. I'm just shocked that they better. haven't had a, a real team of people who've got clearance going into the beach house because if they found a bunch and little tranches in Wilmington, they found them at the Penn Biden Center. You know, of course they're going to. And I want to know, does he have more residents? Are there more apartments? Are there storage units? And oh, God, sorry about that. That was my uh, little apple box. <laughs> I'm ready. For You're very passionate. I'm so passionate. And everyone, I, you know, let me be very clear about this. I'm very passionate. All right, now speaking of access to secret documents, new Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy vowing to block Democrats Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell from the powerful House Intel Committee because of documents the Speaker has seen. Watch. If you got the briefing I got from the FBI, you wouldn't have Swalwell on any committee. And you're going to tell me other Democrats couldn't fill that slot? He cannot get a security clearance in the private sector. What's your clearance, Clarence? Swalwell says he's now getting death threats because of McCarthy. Watch. People parrot what Kevin McCarthy is saying when they call and make the threats. And recently, someone said that they were going to uh, rape and kill uh, my children, uh, and, and they were using the language that Kevin McCarthy was using. I don't remember hearing the speaker say he was going to rape and kill Eric Swalwell's children. That might be a bit dramatic. No one should be making those kind of threats against anybody, regardless of party or if they do hold elective office. But I do have to tell you my Eric Swalwell story. I saw him on Friday at Newark Airport. He was going up the escalator, I was coming down, and I flipped him off because that is my constitutionally protected right of free speech to express my disgust for a member of Congress whom I believe is abusing their power. And I also believe he's a spy humper. His uh, bitchy minder said, that woman just flipped you off. And Swalwell turned around like this. And uh, I gave him a big smile. Yeah, so Swalwell, if you're watching, and I know you always do, 
That was me, buddy. Now remember, <laughs> when Eric Swalwell was connected to a suspected Chinese spy working on his campaign, as Speaker McCarthy can certainly remove him from committee, Schiff and anyone else from the intel panel specifically, but Democrat leadership, they are pushing hard uh, to keep them on the committee. Should these guys be allowed anywhere near important committees? Ilya? Look, this is a political determination for the House to make. And once you open that door, what's good, good for the goose is good for the gander, by, by which I mean when the Democrats removed uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and Paul Gosar. And we can argue about which offense is more serious, which allegation is more credible. Uh, but the point of the matter is this is not a court of law. This is a, a political judgment made that's going to be made by the House. And now, I'd prefer that each party police its own, like the Republicans did when they removed Steve King. Uh, from his committees, the mm -hmm. former uh, congressman, uh, but they're not doing that, uh, and so this is this is what it's come to. And uh, you know, Smallwell is, is is smarmy. He's also term limited by the Democrats' mm -hmm. own rules that they waive just to set up this show vote uh, for for Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, you're not supposed to be on the Intel Committee for more than four cycles. Uh, he has termed out of that. What I thought was very interesting, Kevin, is. He was flying first class on United in Polaris Business, which is the most expensive class on any United flight. Uh, One-way tickets from Newark to LAX, he was on my plane, uh, approximately $3,500 a seat. He was on there with two of his minders, and I'm wondering if taxpayers had to foot that bill for his travel. Well, listen, I think that, you know, he's been flying back and forth to California for a long time, so at least eight years. So I'm sure he's uh, in got China. a lot of upgrade, uh, upgrade credits uh, to, that, to that point. But listen, I do agree uh, with the point made that, you know, I think politics should be, uh, party politics should be gar governed by both Democrats and Republicans in terms of these committee assignments. It became very egregious in the last Congress with MTG and Paul Gosar, and you had Republicans also stepping forward and voting with Democrats to remove them from those committees. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time we've seen a speaker actually uh, use that power potentially specifically for the Intelligence Committee. And I'd like to hear more from Speaker McCarthy if he's going to make these accusations mm -hmm. about this FBI briefing when uh, Eric Swalwell has been cleared by the FBI, when uh, he's been praised by the FBI for his cooperation with that specific individual who targeted many members of Congress, including Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, in, uh, and uh, Congressman Honda, among others, uh, then I want to see more information and not just these somewhat scurrilous attacks on, on Swalwell's, Swalwell's character. Nah, Swalwell deserves to be flipped off and thrown off the committee. Olivia? I am just... I'm just amazed. Is there really no other better Democrats to pick? I mean, I think that says a lot about the party and, I mean, the fact that they waived the term limit rule. I mean, it, it just shows the corruption. It's blatant to me. I think someone should ask Fang Fang what she thinks about it, honestly, and see what she has to say. Yeah, I wonder where she is now. She'd probably be a barrel of fun to talk to. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I got to tell you, Swalwell walks with a great deal of swagger. Maybe he needs to be brought down a peg because... You know, Kevin, sorry, that's what happens. When you start blocking people and, and taking them off committees, same thing's going to happen to you. But I, I have to say, I've seen no two people more deserving of being stripped of their committee positions than Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell. They're both total hacks, and they have abused their powers in different ways. So, ew. Um, all right, party panel, please don't go anywhere. We have so much more coming up. I told you I'd be easy on Kevin. Coming up, crime plaguing New York City streets. Mayor Adams, nowhere to be found. Our very own meteorologist, Adam Klutz, violently attacked on the subway Sunday morning. He's going to tell us all about it next.